वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज़ हर्षिता मिश्रा फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जुआलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टूडे वील स्टडी अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ इको सिस्टम्स स्पेसिफिकली अबाउट एक्वाटिक इको सिस्टम इन विच वील स्टडी अबाउट फ्रेश वाटर इको सिस्टम लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल्स आर आफ्टर द एंड ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल यूल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द स्ट्रक्चर फंक्शन एंड कंपोजिशन ऑफ इको सिस्टम डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन इको सिस्टम इकोलॉजी एंड इन्वायरमेंट लिस्ट द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ इको सिस्टम्स एंड देयर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स know the characteristics of freshwater ecosystem explain the limiting factor of the freshwater ecosystems etc so we'll start with the introduction any assemblage of the plant and animals able to exist within the area will in time form a biotic community in the community the different species tends to interact with one another and to modify the conditions of life within which each exist they therefore develop the interrelationship and interdependencies which constitute an ecosystem all the ecosystems of an earth together form the biosphere the biosphere is that portion of earth within which life exists it includes all oceans and fresh water lower layers of the atmosphere and the outer skin of the earth's crust the rocks the soils and the earth surfaces the term ecosystem was proposed by mr a g tensley in 1935 He defined it as the system of resulting from integration of all the living and non-living factors of environment. An ecosystem is an overall integration of which mosaic of interacting organisms and their environment. It is a basic functional unit with no limits of boundaries. Therefore, it represents the highest level of energy-based ecological interactions. Now we study about the structure of ecosystem. trophic structure of the ecosystem based on the trophic structure ecosystem is two layered first autotrophic and second is heterotrophic autotrophic autotrophic means self nourishing stratum is upper layered also called the green belt of the chlorophyll containing plants while heterotrophic means other nourished where stratum is second layer and also known as the brown belt of soil and sediments decaying matters roots etc now we know about the component of the ecosystem living organisms and their non living environment are in inseparable and interact with each other in an ecosystem therefore they constitute the two major component of the ecosystems abiotic and biotic components abiotic means non living components and biotic means living components abiotic components which includes inorganic compounds like substance phosphorus carbon nitrogen hydrogen etc which are involved in mineral cycling the amount of these substances present in the ecosystem at any point of time is the indicator of its standing quality now we know about the organic substances substances like proteins carbohydrates lipids etc present either in the biomass or in the environment that is biochemical structure air water and substrate environment including the climate regime and other physical factors biotic components it is living component of an ecosystem and gives the trophic level nutritional structure to an ecosystem the biotic component comprises of producers they convert sun's energy into chemical or food energy they are usually green plants phagotrophs phago means to eat or consumers they depend upon the producers for food or energy they may be herbivores carnivores etc now saprotrophs sapro to decompose so they are decomposers they break down the complex compounds of dead or living protoplasm into simpler forms and release inorganic nutrients in the environment which can be re reused by autotrophs they are also referred as micro consumers and chiefly include bacteria actinomycetes and fungi now we come to the type of ecosystem there are four major habitats in the biosphere they are terrestrial freshwater marine and estuarian based on these habitats the ecosystem study is classified under different categories here we'll focus on freshwater ecology freshwater ecology means freshwater ecosystems are in close vicinity of man and therefore it can be easily studied and identified these are relatively small ecosystems and hence easily accessible within the use of relatively simple instruments the comparatively small biodiversity of ba freshwater ecosystems makes it easier to understand the dynamics of the natural ecosystem now we know about the freshwater habitat any water body having low salt concentration usually less than 1% is called freshwater body 
Animals as well as plants in these fresh waters are adapted to the low salt concentration and are unable to survive high concentration of the salt present in ocean. The study of relationship between living organisms and the freshwater environment constitute the freshwater ecology. The study of physical, chemical, geological and biological aspects of freshwater is called limnology. The term potamology is frequently used for studying the river systems. The word stream is used to indicate any mass of water with unidirectional flow, mountain brooks, spring brooks, creeks and rivers. Types of freshwater habitat. Freshwater habitats are studied under three major categories for convenience. Standing water or also called lentic. Lenis means calm. So habitats which are calm in nature, example lake, pond, swamps are called lentic. Lotic that means lotus that means they are washed. Habitats like springs, streams and rivers and wetlands. Wetlands include marshes and swamps. Now we focus on freshwater ecosystem. Freshwater habitats occupy a relatively small portion of earth's surface as compared to marine and terrestrial habitats. Yet they play an important role for humans because of the following reasons. First, they are cheapest and most convenient source of the water for industrial as well as domestic needs. They are the bottlenecks of the hydrological cycle. They are a convenient and cheapest sink for waste disposable system. There are some limiting factors for freshwater ecosystems. Number one is temperature. The unique properties of water maintain the temperature fluctuations in the water body. Some of the thermal properties are number one, high specific heat. Water has highest specific heat. To change the temperature of water, a relatively large amount of heat is required compared to other substances of the same mass. One gram calorie of heat is required to raise one millimeter, one milliliter of water by one degree of centigrade from 15 degree centigrade to 16 degree centigrade. High latent heat of fusion. 80 calories are required to change one gram of ice from water without changing the temperature. Really? Highest latent heat of evaporation. 536 calories per gram are absorbed during evaporation which occurs more or less continually from vegetation, water and ice surfaces. Highest density at 4 degrees centigrade helps in expanding water from both above and below the surface and making it lighter. This property prevents the water bodies like lakes from freezing. Temperature is the major limiting factor for aquatic biota because aquatic organisms often have a narrow tolerance. Therefore, they are also called stenothermy. Therefore, even a small change in temperature can have widespread effects. Transparency. Transparency is an important parameter to measure the penetration of light. Penetration of light is limited by suspended materials, restricting the photosynthetic zone where aquatic habitats have appreciable depth. Turbidity, turbidity is caused either by clay and split particles or by excretory products of the living organisms. Turbidity caused due to suspended clay and split particle is considered as an important limiting factor. On the other hand, turbidity caused by living organism is the measurement of productivity of the water body. Transparency can be measured with an instrument called Sechi disc. It consists of a white disc about 20 cm in diameter that is lowered from surface until it just disappears from the view. Sechi disc transparency of unproductive clear lake is about 40 meters whereas a heavy turbid water body it is as low as few centimeters. Current. Current plays an important role in estimation of distribution of salts, vital gases and small organisms. It serves as an important limiting factor for lotic systems, especially for streams. Concentration of respiratory gases. Oxygen and carbon dioxide concentration are often limiting in freshwater environment. Dissolved oxygen content DO and biological oxygen demand BOD are important determinants for measuring the biological and physical health of a water body. These are one of the most intensively studied physical factors. Dissolved oxygen reflects the productivity. Biochemical oxygen demand or biological oxygen demand measures the amount of dissolved oxygen which is utilized by aerobic microorganism while decomposing the organic matter in water body at certain temperature and over a specific period of time. BOD affects the amount of dissolved oxygen in streams and river. The oxygen consumption rate is affected by many variables like temperature, pH, presence of certain kinds of microorganisms and the type of organic and inorganic materials in the body. 
the greater the BOD, the more rapidly oxygen is depleted in the stream. Less BOD indicates less availability of oxygen to higher forms of aquatic life. A high BOD means low dissolved oxygen. As a result of such conditions, aquatic organisms become stressed, suffocated and ultimately die. Concentration of biogenic salts. Concentration of salts like phosphates and nitrates are the limiting factor of freshwater ecosystems. Calcium and some other salts may also be limiting factor in some lakes. The algal productivity of some of the freshwater lake is limited by availability of inorganic forms of phosphorus as iron phosphate. When lakes are artificially fertilized with phosphorus in the form of phosphates, there is a remarkable increase in productivity. Phosphate received from runoff from agricultural fields and the sewage supply to the lakes also results in enhanced productivity. Isolation due to land barriers, distribution and number of organisms in freshwater habitat is also influenced by the ability of the organism to disperse in their surroundings. Isolation due to the presence of land barriers does not allow free movement of the organism to become established in the places otherwise favorable. For example, fishes in the streams which are separated only by a few miles from land but isolated from water may have their niches occupied by different species. Now we come to the osmoregulation. The freshwater organisms face a problem of osmoregulation. The concentration of salts is greater in internal fluids of the body or the cells of the freshwater organism than in the freshwater surrounding environment. Therefore, their body fluid is hypotonic and water tends to enter the body by osmosis if membranes are readily perme permeable to water or salt must be concentrated if membranes are relatively impermeable. Contractile vacuoles in the cells of freshwater protozoans and the kidney of fishes have developed efficient means of excreting water. The difficulty in osmoregulation is one of the reason why the marine animals are unable to invade and survive in freshwater environment. Ecological classification of freshwater organisms. All freshwater ecosystems like rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, wetlands, etc. are home to diverse life forms which are often interpreted in the form of food chain or food web. The variety and number of the biotic community in a freshwater food web depends on the productivity of the water body. The productivity of the water body depends on the availability of energy mostly in the form of solar energy. Raw materials such as nutrients, minerals available in the water and the dissolved oxygen. The available energy constantly change daily due to seasonal cycles and the raw material is continuously circulated via water cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, etc. through and within the ecosystem. These cyclic fluctuations help in determining the short term productivity of the ecosystem. These may be classified on the basis of their position in the energy or food chain as follow. Autotrophs or the producers, this includes green plants and the chemosynthetic microorganisms. Next phagotrophs. Macro consumers includes primary, secondary and tertiary consumers includes herbivores, predators, parasites, etc. Saprotrophs, micro consumers or decomposers. They can be further subclassified according to the nature of organic substrate decomposed. Aquatic organisms may also be classified according to their habitat in water based on their mode of life. Benthos. These are the organisms which remain attached or rest on the bottom or live in the bottom sediments. Benthos may be divided according to the mode of feeding as filter feeders like clams and deposit feeders like snails. Periphytons or the ovush. These are the plants and animals that attach or cling to the stem and leaves of rooted plants or other surfaces projecting above the bottom. Planktons. These are the floating organisms whose movement are more or less dependent on the current. Net plankton is which Net plankton is that which is caught in the fine meshed net which is stored slowly through the water. Nanoplankton is too small to be caught in the net and must be extracted from water collected in the bottle or by means of a pump. Nectons. They are free swimming organism able to navigate at their own wills and hence they are capable of avoiding plankton, nets, water bottles etc. Example fish, amphibians, swimming large insects etc. Newstons. These are the resting or swimming organism on the surface of water. Now we come to the lotic aquatic system. 
Lotic aquatic system are the fresh water bodies with flowing waters. Water in lotic system is in a state of constant motion. Water, river and water in the rivers and stream are most common example of such system. Typically, the lotic aquatic system have their following properties. The flow of water is continuous and unidirectional in lotic system. The volume of water changes rapidly which results in change in velocity of water currents. There is also a wide range of fluctuation in the water level in the lotic system. Water in these system act as effective agent of transportation, transfer and distribution. They continuously erode material along their channels and deposit them to other places. There is no vertical stratification or thorough mixing of contents. The physico-chemical statics of water quality in a state of perpetual change. The environment of a lotic aquatic system is relatively unstable as compared to lentic system. There is a rich supply of oxygen which is derived from air above and also the photosynthetic outputs of the autotrophs. Oxygen is evenly distributed across the water body and oxygen depletion is very rare in unpolluted lotic bodies. Turbidity limits the light of penetration to the deeper zones. Very less amount of carbon dioxide present in these water. Such condition limit productivity. Therefore, algal blooms and growth of other organism is rarely observed in moving waters. Area and depth have little correlation with the productivity. Water current is dominant and determining feature of lotic system. Organisms having effective mechanism to anchor at one place in the water current are generally observed in these ecosystems. Productivity is inversely proportional to the current velocity. Living organisms disseminate their spores, seeds, eggs and sperms through the water current along the length and breadth of the channel. Characteristics of the lotic aquatic system. The properties of the river and stream revolve around the three basic conditions prevailing in these water bodies. Number one current. It is the major controlling and the limiting factor in the stream. Number two land water interchange. It is relatively more extensive in streams resulting in more open ecosystem and a heterotopic community metabolism. Oxygen distribution. Oxygen is generally more uniform in stream and there is little or no thermal chemical stratification. These conditions and their influence on the properties of the lotic system and its community. Current. Presence of definite and continuous current is the primary feature of all lotic systems. However, the velocity of the current varies greatly in different parts of the same stream, both longitudinally and transversely, to axis of flow from one time to another. The velocity of the current is determined by steepness of the surface gradient, the roughness of the stream bed and the depth and the width of the stream bed. Land water interchange. The depth of water and the cross section area is much smaller in stream than in lakes. Therefore. The land surface junction is relatively great in proportion to the size of the stream habitat. Most streams depend upon the land areas, backwaters, connected ponds and lakes for their energy supply. Those streams have their own community of producers. These are usually inadequate to support the large consumer community. Many primary consumers of the stream are detritus feeders which depends upon the organic material that are swept or fall from the terrestrial vegetation. Thus streams form an open ecosystem that is interdigitated with the terrestrial and lentic systems. Therefore, measurement of the productivity of a lotic system must include the adjacent land and the standing water system. Oxygen. Although stream organisms face more extreme condition in regard to current and temperature than do the ponds organisms. Oxygen is not likely to be variable under natural conditions in stream. Due to the small depth, large surface exposed to the air and constant motion, streams generally contain an abundant supply of oxygen, even when there are no green plants. For this reason, streams animal is generally have a large tolerance and especially sensitive to reduced oxygen. Therefore, stream communities are specially susceptible to and quickly modified by any type of organic pollution which reduces the oxygen supply. Therefore, streams are the first victim of urbanization. Zonation in lotic system. Rivers and streams have two major zone. Rapid zone. This is the zone of shallow water. 
where velocity of current is great enough to keep the bottom clear of silt and other loose material thus providing a firm substrate. This zone is occupied largely by specialized benthic or periphytic organisms which become firmly attached or cling to a firm substrate and by strong swimmers such as data fish. Pool zone. This is the zone of deeper water where velocity of current is reduced and silt and other loose material tend to settle to the bottom, thus providing a soft bottom, unfavorable for surface benthos but favorable for burrowing forms, nectons and in some cases planktons. The lotic community. The lotic community is studied under two broad groups, the rapid community and the pool community. Rapid community. The organisms of this group show various adaptations for living in swift currents. They are often referred as torrential fauna, for example, black fly larva and its pupa in cocoon. The larva has sucker at its posterior end and has head net used for straining food from the water. Other examples include Bibiocephala larva, the larva of riffle beetle, Simonimus fly, nymph, stonefly nymph, etc. The current is the major limiting factor in the rapid zone. The type of the bottom like sand, pebbles, clay, bedrock or rubble rock is a very important in determining the nature of the communities and population density of the community dominance. The biota of the rapid zone in the river is highly clumped due to absence of firm substrate. Benthic forms have highest density in this zone. Planktons are generally missing in the stream due to strong current. Now we come to the pool community. The bottom dwellers of the pool community include burrowing forms like mayfly nymphs, hexagenia, dragonfly nymph, etc. The species composition of pool zone consists of some organisms that are present in the ponds. For example, the agarinid beetles, gyrates as well as the surface of the quiet pool as on the surface of the littoral zones of ponds while bluegills, typical pond fishes also reside in the deeper pools of the stream. The soft, continually shifting bottom of the pool area generally limits smaller benthic organisms to burrowing forms, but the deeper, more slowly moving water is favorable for nectons, newstones and the planktons. Sand or soft scale is the least favorable type of bottoms and supports the smallest number of species and individuals of the benthic forms. Clay bottom is generally more favorable than sand. Nectons and burrowing forms such as clams, burrowing odonatas and Ephemeropteras are common in pools. Adaptations in the organisms of lotic habitat, organisms in rapid community and to a lesser extent of the pool community show adaptation for maintaining position in swift water. Some of the adaptations are number 1 permanent attachment to the firm substrate. Attachment to a substrate such as stone, log or leaf moss is an important adaptation of these organisms. This category includes producers, Attached green algae has long trailing filament to attach, Incru encrusting diatoms which cover various surfaces. Third, aquatic mosses of genus Fontinalis and others which cover stones. Consumers, freshwater sponges and caddis larvae which cemented their cases to the stones. Hooks and suckers, animals with rapid zones have hooks or suckers that enable them to grip even smooth surfaces. The dipterin larvae Simulimium, hydrocyc and the caddis are the remarkable in the structure of their suckers and are the only animals to withstand the pounding of waterfalls. Sticky undersurfaces. Many animals have sticky undersurfaces which helps them in adhering to the surfaces. For example, snails and flatworms. Streamlined bodies. All the streams animals have a streamlined body that is their body is more or less in the shape of egg broadly rounded in the front and tapering posteriorly which offers minimum resistance to the water flowing over it. Flattened bodies. Many rapid animals ex exhibit extremely flattened bodies which enable them to find refuge under stones and in crevices. Thus, the body of stonefly and mayfly nymphs living in the swift water is much flatter than the body of nymphs related to species living in ponds. Positive rheotaxis. Some animals orient themselves upstream and are able to swim against the current. This is an inherent behavior pattern known as positive rehotaxis and is an important adaptation. Positive thigmotaxis. Many streams animals have an inherent behavior pattern 
to cling to the close to the surface or to keep the body in close contact with the surface. Thus, when a group of streamlined stonefly nymphs are placed in a dish, they make contact with the underside of the stick, debris or whatever is available. Representatives of Lotic Aquatic System River Most of the rivers originate from glaciers when snow melts in the mountain. Therefore, at the headwaters, the rivers are usually cold, full of oxygen. They run swiftly through shallow riverbeds. Along its path down the mountains, they become broad, warmer, slower, wider and less in oxygen content. Characteristics of a river system, water flow or the current. As the other lotic system, water flow or the current is one of the main factors in determining the characteristic of a river system. The strength of the water current varies from torrential rapid to slow backwaters. The speed of water is also subjected to varying turbulence. The flow and the volume of the water can also be influenced by sudden water input coming from snow melts, rain and also the groundwater. It alters the shape of riverbeds via sedimentation and erosion and creates various types of changes in the habitats. Light Light is a primary source of primary productivity of the rivers. The amount of light received by the river in various regions varies greatly. Deeper parts of the river and the ones with the high sediments have weak light penetration. Temperature Temperature of the water varies with environment. Heating of the water takes place through radiation at the water surface and conduction by the air and the surrounding substrate. Now we come to the substrate. The substrate where river organisms live may be organic including leaves, fine particles, moss, wood, plants or it may be inorganic consisting of the substance from the catchment area such as pebbles, boulders, sand, gravel, silt or sand. These surfaces are not permanent and change significantly during the floods. Now we come to the chemical properties of the river system. The chemical nature of the river water is determined by the inputs coming from surrounding environment that is the neighboring catchment area, rain and the human intervention like release of pollutants. Oxygen is the important chemical that determines the productivity and the biotic community of the river body. It is dissociated in the river body through water surface and is mixed via air current. Now let's summarize the whole module. Ecosystem term proposed by A.G. Tensley is a biological community consisting of organisms interacting with each other and with their physical environment. Group of organisms interacting and interdependent on each other inhabiting the same area constitute biotic community. Ecosystem is composed of autotrophic chlorophyll containing plants and heterotrophics. Two major components of the ecosystem are biotic producers and consumers or decomposers and abiotic non-living organic and inorganic compounds components. There are various types of ecosystem on earth's surface. Ecosystem can be natural or man-made. Natural ecosystem consists of terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem includes forest ecosystem, desert ecosystem and grassland ecosystem. Aquatic ecosystem includes freshwater ecosystem and marine ecosystem. Freshwater ecology gives the idea of aquatic ecosystem in the vicinity which is easily accessible affects our lifestyle. Freshwater bodies contain salt concentration less than 1%. The study of physical, chemical, geological and biological features of freshwater ecosystem is called limnology. Freshwater habitat consists of lentic or standing water habitats, lotic or running water habitat and wetlands which includes marshes and swamps. Temperature, transparency, water current, concentration of respiratory gases and biogenic salts act as limiting factor of freshwater ecosystem. Water has some unique properties like high specific heat, high latent heat of fusion and evaporation and highest density at 4 degree centigrade which help in maintaining properties of freshwater ecosystem. Concentration of dissolved oxygen also plays a crucial role in freshwater ecosystem. Biological oxygen demand that is BOD is important determinant of biological and physical well-being of water body. Less BOD that is high dissolved oxygen indicates less availability of oxygen to aquatic lives. Salts of phosphates and nitrates are limiting factors of freshwater ecosystem. Distribution of organisms is also influenced by their ability to disperse in the surroundings. 
due to difference in the concentration of salts in internal fluid and in surroundings, freshwater organisms face a problem of osmoregulation. In protozoans, contractile vacuole is present for this purpose and kidneys in fishes are efficient organ for excreting water. In freshwater community, there are autotrophs, green plants and chemosynthetic organisms, phagotrophs, primary, secondary and tertiary consumers and saprotrophs. Micro consumers are decomposers, they are found. Aquatic organisms can also be classified as benthos, which rest at the bottom, example snails, periphytons clinging to the leaves, planktons floating with the current, nectons floating at their will, example fishes, amphibians and newstons resting or swimming at the surface. Flowing freshwater bodies are called lotic water bodies. Vertical stratification is not observed and environment is comparatively unstable as compared to lentic water body. Flow of water in these lotic bodies is unidirectional and water level keeps on fluctuating. Lotic water bodies are efficient transporters, they erode materials along their channels and deposit them elsewhere. Oxygen is evenly distributed and amount of carbon dioxide is very less. Due to all these factors, algal blooms are rarely observed. The properties of rivers and streams have three basic conditions, water current, land water discharge and oxygen distribution. Current is primary factor which differentiate it from the stream or river. The productivity of the lotic system includes adjacent land and standing water system. Due to more exposure of oxygen to the stream, organisms inhabiting such water bodies have no narrow tolerance towards limiting supply of oxygen. Streams get affected most easily by pollution and urbanization. Rivers and streams have two basic zones, rapid zone and pool zone. Velocity of current is strong in rapid zone such as bottom, is clear of silt and loose material. Benthic and epiphytic organisms reside here. In pool zone, velocity of current is low and silt and other loose materials get settled to the bottom. Burrowing animals, nectons and planktons reside here. Lotic community can be divided into two groups, rapid community and pool community. Rapid community lives in swift current as is, and is known as torrential fauna like black file larva or riffle beetle larva. Benthic community is highly observed and planktons are usually missing in this zone. Pool community include burrowing animals like mayfly, dragonfly nymphs, etc. Deeper slope moving water is favorable for nectons, newstons and planktons. Organisms in lotic habitat are adapted for surviving in swift water. They are able to permanently attach to a firm substrate like attached green algae or aquatic mosses. They are often provided with hooks and suckers for attachment like dipteran larvas or they have sticky surfaces. They have flattened bottom like snails and platforms and exhibit positive thigmotaxis and rheotaxis. River, a lotic aquatic water ecosystem has few characteristics like water flow or current which has capacity to alter riverbeds, sedimentation and erosion. Light also play a significant role as it is a source of primary productivity and amount of light a river receiving determines its productivity and growth. Temperature, change in climate and type of substrate also plays important role in defining the characteristics of a river. That will be the end of it. Thank you.